Hey guys, Harry here, and today we're going to be talking about top five decision points you're going to want to think about in Microsoft Teams. And I'm not saying this is day one. Day one, get some excitement, get some buzz going, get some stakeholders, some champions. But before you go broad and wide with your deployment, you're going to want to make sure you think about some of these governance points to make sure you are still allowing end user productivity, but mitigating risk for you and your business. So first up, you're going to want to think about who has the ability to create a Microsoft team. So this is really going to be, do you want to allow everyone in the organization to create a team, or are you going to want to limit it to a subset of users? My recommendation to you is for the most part going to be allow everyone in your organization to be able to create a team. Because once you start limiting that, you can really start impacting the end user's productivity, but also their experience of your pilot or your proof of concept, because now they're going to have to go to IT potentially to request a team or go to your ITSM tool, and that can negatively impact their experience. So I recommend just allowing it to be open. Of course, you can monitor and audit who's creating these teams, and people are going to have a bit of fun with it. At the beginning, you're probably going to see some pretty funny teams turning up, and I'll put a few on screen so you can see some things that I've seen, um, but don't worry about that. You can audit it, you can control it. So I recommend just letting people create teams and don't limit it day one. Next, you're gonna wanna think about naming policies. I mean, you probably got naming policies already in your environment, maybe in your Active Directory on-prem, you had naming conventions that you try to stick with. So this is a similar methodology Inside Azure Active Directory, we can create naming policies and conventions that are going to help your organization out. It is worth noting as this is for Office 365 groups. So this isn't just for Teams. This would be for things like Planner, SharePoint, Outlook. So bear that in mind while creating these policies. But what can you do? Well, you can create prefixes, suffix. And this is pretty cool because you can create it with a thick string maybe. So you could prefix of your company name or whatever you wanted to do, or you can make it dynamic with user attributes. So for example, someone in the legal team could go create a team called audit and we can say, well, we want to dynamically add their department name to the front as a prefix of this Office 365 group. And then it's going to go ahead and add legal. We can make it hyphen and then it's going to be audit. So plenty of things you can think about there. One pro tip though, is you may not want to turn this on day one. Have a look at what users are creating, what prefixes they're making themselves, and that's probably going to help you then create your global policies moving forward. The second thing we can do is we can have a block word list. So we can avoid kind of that misuse of teams. It might be if somebody gets a little, you know, a little lax on the way they name stuff, which may not be uh, in the company's interest. Or you may just want to block intentional words. People can't use CEO, for example, to, uh, to add extra power to their, their team name or whatever it might be. So just have a think of those. Do you need prefixes and suffix to your teams? And what words do you want to block? The next thing in Teams you really want to think about is access. And we have what we call external access and guest access. External access you can think of as federation. So can my company communicate with another company? And this is, as you would imagine, you can have it as what we say is open federation. So you can talk to anyone else that is openly federated with your organization, or you can block and allow domains. So you might want to be able to block personal domains. You don't want people chatting to people on personal accounts because it's not going to be business related work for example. So you need to think as an organization, are you able to allow your employees to communicate with other companies through Microsoft Teams? And the next thing is, is what we call guest access. And this is a part of Azure Active Directory where we can invite users into our tenant who aren't you know, in our company per se. And now what that allows us to do is add them to, for example, a Microsoft team. And this is super powerful because now they can chat, they can look at the files and they can really collaborate as if they were 
somewhat part of our organization. Of course, you do need to be careful with this of who's coming into your environment. You're going to want to audit them, make sure that they still need access, sign a terms of use policy, that kind of stuff. But this really changes your company to a next level of how you can collaborate with other organizations. So have a think about whether or not you allow external access communication and whether or not you should be allowed guest access and guest users into your team's tenant. You're going to want to think about what features are, are going to be included in Microsoft Teams in your pilot phase. So, you know, chats, calls, meetings, conferencing. You know, these may be all things you want to do, but you're going to want to think about what is most important for the pilot and what makes sense for your organization. Because you may not want to start off with doing enterprise voice, for example. You might want to get teams out there, get everyone excited about it using VoIP, using video calling. But then when your organization is ready, then you can look at what it would take to maybe move your existing voice system to Microsoft Teams. So have a think about what you want today. Of course, you want to give you know, the rich features and allow it to, to shine. But just have a think about what makes sense for you. So last up, we have data security. Of course, I don't need to tell you how important data security is, but I do want to give you a couple of things to think about in Microsoft Teams. And first of all is being able to put classifications for your team. This allows you when somebody creates a new team, they can say, okay, this team is highly confidential, confidential general. For example, you, know, you can make up your, your own taxonomy but what this allows you to do is now put specific settings and behaviors on those teams. So, for example, an HR group is creating a team for sensitive employee data. Well, we're going to want to make sure that they put that as highly confidential. And then that can stop them from adding external guests and so on and so forth. So this can be really powerful. So you're going to want to just think about the taxonomy and how this can play in your environment. Common ones is being able to, as I say, block external guests from being within that team. Secondly is retention. You're going to want to think about how the data retention comes into play for your team's environment. So of course, you can imagine, you can set how long should data be stored for? Should it be kept? Should it be deleted? Is it from last modified? All that kind of jazz. But what you do want to know and, and take into consideration is that there are different ways of and different places where Teams data is stored. And when it comes to retention, you can set up different retention policies for chat and for channel messages. But as we've, you know, you would have seen in the files tab, you know, if it's in a one-to-one or one-to-many chat, then it's going to store it in OneDrive. If you're in the Teams section, it's going to store it in SharePoint. So you've got data being stored in different locations. So you're going to want to think about the retention policies in OneDrive, in SharePoint, in Teams, in Outlook, so that you know that all that data is being retained to meet those industry or you know, internal or legal policies and, and standards and regulations that you've got to meet. So have a look at retention. Make sure you know how it works and understand what your security, legal, and compliance team expect from you. So that's it. There's a few top tips. Hopefully these come in helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe, and uh, we'll be back with you next week for another video.